effective. Uh, we could put covers over the wheels, uh, but they might detract from the car. I've been seeing some experiments lately where people build a big teardrop uh, tail on the right. back of a pickup right. truck or car out of cardboard and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. You know, one of the most interesting things, uh, since we're sending people funny to Mythbusters now, <laughs> is they actually put clay all over the outside of a car and made dimples like a golf ball. Okay. And actually did get an increase in mileage. Really? Yes, a noticeable one. Like from 22 to 28 miles per gallon with these dimples, like yeah. a golf ball that right, makes sure. the turbulent surface to decrease the uh, air resistance, it apparently works. Uh, we could probably come up with some uh, dimpled panel for the side of the car and the roof that <laughs> might uh, do as much as uh, the belly pan. But uh, you're all over it, Carson. That's, uh, that's what we have to think about. It's a new way of uh, looking at cars. We still have to be able to get in and out of the doors and... Uh, you know, get at the stuff underneath the car. Yeah. There, there's some just practical things with living with a car, but a belly pan is uh, is certainly an idea. I'd say we're not going to do it on the Mini, uh, but anything like that that you can do to decrease that air resistance. Very different from an ICE engine. You normally get much better mileage on the highway. With an electric yeah, car, you, you get much less, and it's, it is all about air resistance, anything you can do to cut it. One of the things about the Prius that's a, sort of a dirty little secret is that they get very good mileage because it's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. That car would get very good mileage anyway. It has a uh, um, coefficient of drag or CID of 0 0.25. That's low. When you get below 0.3, it's two thirds that's, of what yeah. the Speedster is. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Uh, it's a very well designed uh, car for airflow, mm -hmm. and um, and they would probably with a gasoline motor. Yeah, probably do just fine. Probably do the same yeah. efficiency as they do with the hybrid. That mm. that's uh, that's speculation, mm. but, it, but it's not something not. I came up with. I've read it four or five times. What else is Carson? Let's got see what else he's got. Uh, we talked about air resistance. Just a thought. I've heard about heat pumps to both generate hot and cool air more efficiently than boiling water mm -hmm. and running an air conditioning unit. And supposedly the EV1 should have used such a device, but I'm very unsure about this. And might it not be possible to get a heat pump for automotive use? Hmm. Sure. Um, you know, I haven't seen really heat pumps talked about on cars. Not on cars really at all. And I'm not really sure why. Uh, some of the components are a little bigger than a normal air conditioning system, but we have a compressor that's mm -hmm. um, essentially a uh, 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 traction built compressor. A heat pump basically reverses that uh, mm -hmm. cycle, and uh, you need a couple of more lines and uh, a thing. Uh, one of the problems is they don't work very well below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, so you have to have yeah, auxiliary heat yeah. anyway. So, so I guess the thinking is, since the in most cars it comes as a byproduct of the engine right. heat, it's anyway. there anyway. Yeah. So why would you uh, go to any expense to get heat out of your air conditioning system when you have an abundance of it from the engine? Coming from the engine. In an electric car, I think it'd be a, a fabulous idea. I'd like to see a, a product we could put on that was a heat pump uh, that worked with thing, and then have a little. Uh, just as you do in your house, a little electric auxiliary. Mm -hmm. It's a great idea for me. Okay. Doesn't make much sense for an ice, which is why you haven't seen them. Uh, let's see. In a show a while back, you were talking about ultra capacitors and that you're testing them in the gem. Mm -hmm. That sounded very interesting. I was looking for a more, little update on the uh, ultra capacitors. Ultra capacitors come out the same way every time. I love ultra capacitors. I would love for. Uh, Dick Ware to get his e-store to work. Uh -huh. yeah. um, I was first um, keyed to this with a guy in Australia who tested a EV with lead acid batteries. Lead acid batteries typically last about two years, about 300 charges, and you have to replace the batteries. Yeah. He put 100,000 miles on a car in Australia on lead acid batteries, and he did it by buffering the batteries with a capacitor. And the way this works is that a capacitor can put out a tremendous amount of power very quickly, mm -hmm. but right. it can't carry a whole lot of energy. Right. It's, it's, we call it a power device 
whereas right. a battery is an energy device. Right. A battery can carry a lot more energy, but it can't put it out much of it at a time. Mm -hmm. And so they're a good marriage. Um, if you charge up the capacitors at the rate the battery likes, then when you're driving the car, you press on the accelerator, that capacitor can put out a huge amount of uh, uh, power instantly, and the batteries kind of ramp up. As the available energy in the capacitor declines slowly, the power draw from the batteries increases slowly. Similarly, when you pull up to the stop sign and stop, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the capacitor, now we have no power demand, the batteries continue to provide power and it gradually tapers off. Right. So instead of nice. a big pulse that goes straight up, provides power and goes straight down, a square wave basically, we're converting the output of the batteries to a sawtooth waveform. Uh, a long ramp up to the peak and similarly a long ramp off of the peak. And I think that that would dramatically increase the life of the battery. Right. Yep, we've talked about this, yes. Uh, yeah. Why don't you bring over one of our Maxwell super caps and oh, I'll okay. uh, show Got one what coming I'm up here. About. Yeah. Like a spot there's a, for there's it a here. basic problem with the whole concept and it has to do with the, no, bring me the whole six pack. Um, it has to do with the, uh, the size and weight function. Yeah, they're um, almost the same, aren't they? And size and weight are always, Brian, yeah. would you please go get me a six pack of ultra caps? Yeah. Uh, Trace is uh, out there still got trying the, to get the there you go. sign okay. done for the door. There you go. Okay, we got room for a sixer here. Yeah, let, let me show this thing. Oh, there we go. Here is uh, a little six pack of uh, Maxwell Ultra Caps. Yeah. Uh, you need little balancing boards on them. Uh, you do them uh, in series. Uh, each uh, capacitor is about the size of a Coca Cola can, and it's 3,000 farads, which is an immense amount of uh, capacitance. Unfortunately, it'll only do 2.7 volts at about 2.8. Point eight five uh, they collapse yeah. and destroy themselves yeah that's not good when we're doing a so 2.7 times yeah. 6 is 12 16.2 uh, uh, volts is what you can do with this uh, this is uh, getting up it's not as big as a lithium battery for uh, uh, four cells but it's, it's pretty close it's pretty close yeah and it does when, have weight if I put these capacitors in a car, and I've tried every we'll time we've done we, so, Every time we try, yeah. Ever since testing these on the gyms, I drove the gym three and a half blocks on 36 of these. Mm -hmm. yeah. Switching yep. the battery packs off. And in all cases, with these switched on, I would press the accelerator lightly and just about tear the front wheel off the car. <laughs> you know, you're spinning out in a front wheel drive car. This is an, an amazing thing. Um, but uh, so it's instant power and dramatic life extension. The problem is almost no range extension. Uh, maybe uh, uh, you might extend things a quarter of a mile. Yeah, if but that. nothing significant. Not for the Every time changing. you put this together, now understand each of these little Coke cans is 110 bucks. Mm -hmm. Right, so six of them is $660. I could buy another, uh, so uh, so half center sky um, cells, uh, the 100 amp hours are about 110 bucks. Yeah. And for just a little bit more size and weight than this, I could put another thunder sky mm -hmm. battery uh, of four cells. Four pack, yeah. And so every time you do the math on this, for the same size, weight, and cost, I could get more range in the car. If I had that kind of room and weight carrying ability, why wouldn't I go for the more range? It never works out because we always want more range. I'm trading more, more range against cycle life, which the Thunder Skies are, as we've said, supposedly up to 5,000 cycles now. Um, so what am I gonna get? Since we're not using lead acid batteries, the capacitors never work out. It's uh, one of those things, I love them. I think they're exactly what a battery ought to be. They ought to have three leaves, 
instead of two uh, for each leaf in that cell and make it a combination uh, ultra cap and battery. battery. But it's going to work out the same way. They could have a smaller, lighter battery without the ultra cap. Yeah. And mm. so every calculation you can do with supercapacitors winds up with them sitting on the bench and you driving down the road with more batteries. That's as best as I can tell. Uh, I haven't figured a way to get them in a car that didn't, for the same space and weight, I could have more range. We've and tried it. We've tried more than once. I'd love to have them in there, but I just can't do it. And... Uh, 